had one earlier that was about um, O-ring testing, they call it. There's a lot more self-testing methods. I was just giving you two, the sway test and the quadricep test. In our remote class that we're going to be uh, starting soon, that's the psychological remote where you learn how to do remote sessions, clearing deep-seated psychological issues. We'll be getting into that, and we're going to give you more. But someone asked about what I call the O-ring. There's different ways of taking your thumb to, say, your index finger and then pulling it apart. Um, I don't do this. I don't find it as, for me, it works, but for some people it does. And you can say, body, give me a yes. Body, give me a no. And then it will go through. <laughs> um, you can do other fingers as well. Little finger, um, yes, no. That might be easier because there's less uh, tendency to compensate. So there's lots of self-testing techniques. Um, I just, whatever you find works well for you, do it. Some people use a pendulum. I've used a pendulum at times. In fact, I keep one in my pocket. But uh, <clears throat> again, it's not so much of this course, but some people will hold a pendulum and they'll say, pendulum, give me a yes. Okay, and there, mine goes forward and back. And then pendulum, give me a no. And now mine sways left or right. And whatever works for you is fine. So the bottom line is, like with clients, I never use a pendulum. Um, I might use it occasionally on my own. You can even put it over a substance, and if it goes in a yes direction for you, some people will be clockwise and counterclockwise, no. You can do things with that. Uh, so there's a lot of alternative testing methods. The main thing I like, especially why I like this, is when I have a person with a straight arm and it's comfortable, I'm not pushing hard, sometimes I'll switch the other arm, but they don't get so tired if I, you know, just doing light pressure, is they see when it goes weak. See, if I'm going like this and go, oh, I go weak, well, they don't notice anything. And that's part of the great thing about muscle testing with anything is they see the difference. Like in our biological course, we, we show you how you can find what specific nutrient a person's uh, deficient in. And then there's all these muscles, like say vitamin A, for instance. There's all these muscles related to vitamin A, like the psoas, for instance, uh, popliteus, um, pectoralis major sternal. Um, so we, we test all these different muscles and they'll be weak on the person. And then I'll, I'll put like vitamin A in their circuit, like if they were tasting it on the tongue or even in their energetic field, and every muscle goes from totally weak to totally strong and they go, wow, I guess I need that. Or it could be a vitamin A rich food. So the more you are testing in ways that people notice before being very weak and now totally strong, that gives them feedback that, wow, this is what I need to do to get my body back in balance. And I like that for me, too, that I really notice, like, whoa. You know, we also saw that with Kat with the, uh, the phone shields, you know. And when you start seeing, oh, my God, I'm, I'm holding this phone for so many hours a day right up against my head. It's totally draining my energy. No wonder I'm so fatigued when they see that muscle test just showing that. And so they say, okay, well, you need to start at least leaving that outside your field. We know you've got about that much distance, Kat, where if you don't have a shielded phone, but even with the phone, I still keep mine away. You know, it's like the more you lower your stress level, the better you're going to feel, the more energy you're going to have. I have more energy now, I think, than I did, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Um, it's just the key is keep the energy flowing, <laughs> okay? We got that.